your opinions or questions before we move on. I mean, I think we probably will come back to Arena because it's it is dominating things at the moment. But mm. I really wanted to, you know, find out more about your background mm. and how you ended up where you are now. Uh, in particular, this question of the fact that you come from a what you grew up in Te Atatū, mm. uh, a young Pak Māori um, person joining the National Party, mm. and it, it seems a bit odd. Well, it does, mm. I think it's odd, but mm. I think it's um, a lot of people would see it as yeah. odd. Uh, <laughs> can you explain why you didn't join yeah. the Labour Party? Yeah, I mean, so so if you see the, the, the fact, you know, yes, uh, Māori, uh, Ngāti Mani Apoto. Um, I've always taken the view, and it, and it annoys me, it grates with me actually, when people say, oh, because you're Maori, you should be this. Yeah. Right, you should be that. Actually, the political spectrum in Maoridom mm. is as wide as the political spectrum is that's, in the white world. That's right? true, but it seems to be bunched up in terms of partisan politics in a particular mm. area mm. at the moment, mm. and you mm. are an outlier in that, and so mm. it's still interesting. So, mm. um, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you know. Um, is, is it because you weren't particularly interested in your Māori side, perhaps, as mm. some would see it, or mm. is it because you think the National Party um, are very interested in, in that part of politics? Or, look, being frank with you, I think yeah. there is something in the fact, look, my um, my father's uh, mother, Naku Joseph, grew up on a marae, you know, mm. in Oparuri, mm. um, in, in, in sort of rural Waikato. So, um, they then moved to Hamilton, mm. he moved to West Auckland. Look, it's true to say, I don't think my father would be offended if he's watching this, yeah. he has very little interest in his yeah. uh, Maori side. Yeah. So there is something in that, you know, moving to the city yeah. and so on. As but many, me, as many part Maori people, many Maori people in New Zealand do. It's yeah, absolutely. Not, um, an aberration. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, but for me, right, what was it about national? My family's not political, actually. Yeah. So it's not that my mother um, or my father were sort of members of a party. In fact, I'm yeah. the first youngest of six kids to join a political party. But me, me, I think, and it may sound cheesy, but actually I aspire. And I could see, um, and my family, I think, could see um, living in West Auckland that the way to do well was education, getting ahead. Right. And to me, the values of National were the values that I kind of um, uh, bought into, yeah. you know, aspiration, I, I choice. Think, I think there's a lot in the political science literature that sort of backs up that position as quite a common feature of people, especially in coming from lower socioeconomic groups mm. that end up voting for parties of the right mm. um, because they might be expected because of their socioeconomic position to favour parties of the left, mm. but they have those aspirations which changes things. So, yeah, yeah I, I, don't I, I mean, I, I would say, I, you know, everyone, hopefully, I remember Lockwood Smith saying not long ago, you know, if you're made in speech, is where 20 years later you end up politically, there's something wrong, right? Ah, if you okay. haven't learnt anything yeah, in that sure. time. And I think for me, if I go back to being a sort of spotty, well, I'm still somewhat spotty, <laughs> but a, a spotty teenager, yes. right? My views then were probably very simplistic, and I okay. like to think that I've moved on but, somewhat. But what, you joined up in the early 90s, which was not a popular yeah. time for the National yeah, yeah, Party. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, agree. They were, you know... John Banks is my hero. How sad is that? Uh, really? Yeah. He, he, sorry, he was or is? <laughs> he was, he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I just, you know, Look, Te Atatū, funnily enough, Chris Carter was yeah. a teacher. So is that, uh, I was wondering if that's the reason you... No, um, not at all. I've, <laughs> you always, I've, always, always, I've, always liked, I've always liked Chris. But look, you know, um, could it have been another political party? Maybe. But actually, I just remember uh, I was turned on by politics. I liked it. I could see that it mattered. Yep. You know, and if anything, yep. actually, this Rena incident shows why it does yep. matter that's right. vitally, right? And uh, when I looked at it and my values and my views, I kind of clicked international. So what, you joined in what, was it 1992 or something? Yeah, thereabouts. I mean, this, right, is, this, is when, this is when literally tens of thousands of people were departing the National Party. Yeah. Um, so, you know, because well, we were, were still in government for a few years after that. That's right, but yeah. uh, I think National Party support plummeted from you know, this landslide victory in yeah. 1990 to 93, where National was down to you know, Are you trying to say that I'm a sad, true believer? Maybe, <laughs> or, may, or maybe you're just so smart that, I think, <laughs> I think as Bob Jones once said, um, the best time to join a political party is when it's at its lowest point. Mm. And then you're able to quickly rise through the ranks because everyone else yeah. is leaving. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about so, that. I don't know. <laughs> I worked for a guy called Tracy Adams, who was the, the national candidate in Tiatatu and got trounced by uh, Chris. And then actually, I worked for um, a guy, Brian Neeson. I don't know if you oh, remember Brian yes. Neeson, who um, had all sorts of um, interesting ideas. But anyway, so, you know, I didn't necessarily agree with everything. 
um, that was going on, or the, the individuals that I was helping. But as I say, I mean, right now we're painting it in terms that, you know, look, it was, it was ideological, it was philosophical. It was also, as I say, actually just a desire to be involved in a political party. Now, if that is a 15, 16 year old, that makes me a weirdo, it probably does. Yeah. Um, but that's how it was, you know, and I've never looked back. I've always been an activist member of the National Party since then. Okay, so, so the neoliberal reforms of that time, which were pretty radical and pretty sort of, um, I don't know if you'd say extreme, but certainly uh, not the usual settings for New Zealand. Um, are they still something that you feel, f you know, you firmly believe in? Or well, I mean, what? firstly, I would say, and I'm not trying to be clever, but. I always get annoyed by the term neoliberal. I mean, okay. I think it's a sort Give of a, another term. a pejorative term that says, you know, you're, you're bad because you follow this prescription. Yeah. Um, now, I would say you actually I am more moderate, probably, than I was back in the days when okay. I thought Banksy was this um, um, a, a, amazing character. You know, and I still have some time for the guy personally. But so, so probably, as I say, I have moved on. But do I basically accept that the reforms that National did in the 90s were the right thing? Yeah, I absolutely do. And in fact, if you look at the economic data, I'd say to you, they were necessary reforms that made the country better. And Labour was able to coast for nine years um, off the back to some extent of those. And of course, globally, um, very good times, right? So sure. let's not forget that we're a cork bobbing on the ocean and the global conditions make a big difference sure. as well. But no, I, I, I can't right now as I sit here think of things in the 90s that I disagree with. Okay. So what about now? What's, what's the ideological nature of this current um, you know, political party and government? Because, you know, I... You know, I teach and, um, yeah. and politics here and students are really interested in this. What is mm. the political character of this government? And they have a bit of trouble trying to work it out because mm. sometimes it seems still quite economically right wing, bringing in asset sales you know, and um, some economic reforms that do seem quite right. But then it yeah. seems very moderate and um, steady as she goes, sort of, you know, where do you see it? Well, I think John Key would say, and I go along with this, that, look, um, it's pragmatic. And to some people will say, well, that's a, um, that's a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, he would, and I think to some extent that is a virtue, right? Because I think you should be doing what works, not just something on the basis of an ideology. Um, so I think that is there. I think we're also seen as really the better at this time economic managers and managers. And again, that's not philosophical. That's just a kind of what works, what's good. I do think, I mean, there is a tension between this whole um, uh, really desirable thing, I think, which is to have a philosophy and a sense of what's underpinning you. Yeah. I think that is still there, though. So you're not entirely a post-ideological party? No, I don't think so at all. I mean, I think we still are, um, and we always will be, governed by sort of freedom, choice, to some extent a social conservatism when compared with, um, with, with Labour and probably the Greens and those things. Mm. Of course, what they mean from um, mm. age to age does change, Shift, yeah. because you know the, yeah. the, the world changes and circumstances And it's it very hard, I guess, analytically to sort of be able to measure these things and mm. describe them, but you know, the classic left-right spectrum and maybe a liberal conservative spectrum mm. o overlaying that is still quite useful. So where would you see yourself yeah. on the left-right spectrum? Well, funnily enough, uh, in my maiden speech, and I've thought about this since, and I even sort of two and a half, three years on, I, I wonder if I, I got it slightly wrong. But I describe myself as reasonably economically dry and reasonably conservative. Now, when I think about the conservative one, actually, the last two and a half years, to some extent, as I've fleshed out my views, I, I'm less conservative probably than I thought I was, right? But sorry, I do. So, conservative economically, you're talking about? No, or no, socially? conservative. Okay. Conservative, I suppose, in a social sense. Actually, yeah. though, I'm not sure about that today okay. so much. But I still do think the core instincts of being conservative, which is, look, um, do no harm first, worry about unintended consequences, those things are with me, right? So okay. I just, I think we as a country, we, we, we find it all too easy to try and legislate away problems and okay. to, 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 to do things without thinking them through, and to that extent I'm a Conservative. Okay. I have a question from the Twitter sphere. Um, in this term of Parliament, are there any government decisions that you have disagreed with, and if so, can you tell us one and why? Hmm. 
Or, can you t or more interestingly, perhaps, are there lots of government decisions that you've disagreed with and you can't tell us about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, look, I'm genuinely trying to think of something where I thought, no, this is balmy. You know what? There, there probably are ones, and I just, I'm not, I genuinely can't think of one, where at the time I thought my gut reaction has been, why on earth are we doing it like this? But actually, as I've, and you know, maybe this is, you know, psychology or something at play, but as I've looked back, I thought, actually, you know what, that was the right, the wise way to do it. So anti-smacking would be one where actually, at the time, you know, I've got supporters and electorate that is a conservative electorate, where I'm wondering if we're doing the right thing um, with a referendum which says, you know, you should be um, changing the law. Actually, now, I think John Key got that 100% right. Actually, he showed wisdom in the way he dealt with it. He's taken a matter out of the political sphere. He made it quite clear that if good parents are being um, penalised for light smacking, you'll do something about that. That just has been proved to be a good position. OK, so you would personally vote in favour of such legislation if it was here and now in 2011? I, I would do things the way we've done them. I wouldn't change what we've done. So, uh, I, you know, I, I think we've... I, I, at the time, you know, Frankly to you, I, I, was, uh, I wasn't sure about that. But looking back on it, I, I absolutely think we got it right. OK, so just going back to this question of the left-right mm -hmm. um, spectrum, so do you think you're a bit more uh, centrist than probably most of your colleagues economically, do you think? That's the sense I get. I can, uh, tell me if I'm wrong. Well, I'm glad you do. That's good, because that's good in MMP politics, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but, no, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I just think these things are, and I'm not trying to be slippery, but I think these are really complicated, right? If you gave me an issue, I would think about it and okay. try and on a merits-based well, way... Sometimes it's about priorities and emphasis, and, like, you have emphasised the need to uh, deal with or uh, ameliorate the problems of an underclass in New Zealand, which mm. puts you probably a bit more more interventionist economically mm. or more, mm. I don't know, less hard line mm. right wing, doesn't it? I, I think, you know, it comes back to what I said before. Actually, going into Parliament, I thought I was more economically dry than I am, okay. actually. And I went to a, um, I suppose in your terms, a neoliberal conference in Sydney <laughs> part way through my... Um, uh, part through, way through being an MP, and I realise actually these guys are really right wing, and I'm just not this right wing. Right, okay. so there is some of that. I mean, the other thing that I think, um, and you're picking up on with my animal welfare bill, actually with other reform ideas I've had, is a real. Um, and again, I hope this doesn't sound cliche, but a heart for the vulnerable so and a desire to do something compassionate about some of these things. Compassionate conservative was the label that you would. You, you know, funnily with? enough, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I do, and I know that sort of conjures up images of George W. and his Stetson and so on, but, but I actually think it's an apt description for where I'm at. Actually, probably a lot of national MPs. I mean, I put Michael Woodhouse uh, in that same categorisation. Chester Burroughs, he's yeah. probably, um, yeah. probably sp slightly more to the left than I am. OK. Uh, yeah. OK, that's interesting. Any other comments from the audience or Twitter sphere at the moment about any of these issues about ideology in particular and what the National Party's about? Okay, so another question then. So, go, uh, feeding on Nikki's question, what's the best one thing that this government has done? The best one thing. So well, this one, one all, you know, you, yeah, I, I have no doubt that um, many in the audience and uh, on Twitter sphere won't agree with me. But if I was to think of a really big, simple thing that I think makes makes a really good long term distance uh, difference, it is the tax switch. So I actually think putting up GST and bringing down income taxes across the board is a systemic, structural thing that, that is really good. It encourages savings. And I see now where this year will be positive in savings in terms of households for the first time in a sort of a decade. I think it's a really important change. OK, so the, the next national government, presuming 